let's talk about King Jared and Onaga's army. But first, done a poll like eight days back. I asked you guys who was the best new protagonist. Your choices. Alex. Luke. Taven. And Shujinko. Damn near 4,000 votes later, your winner is... Shujinko by a landslide. Imagine that. But yeah, let's talk about the combat cast intro. Of course, in the background on a mural, you see Sindel and King Jared. And of course, this is not the King Jared from MK11, where they had this guy out here looking like a pensioner, a senior citizen who couldn't defend himself and got clapped by his own wife. This is the young version, looking like a warrior, has like a staff or a spear in his hand. Let's go, let's see it. And you know, some people were like, why would they even put him in the game? Why not? Why would you not want to see what King Jared could do after all these years? Why would you not want this guy in the game with all these relationships? I don't understand. You would rather have these played out characters that we've used a thousand times instead of exploring new ones? Uh-uh. But to be honest, it's not actually looking good for King Jared. Because it's looking like he might get clapped in this too. In fact, he might even be dead before we even start the chapters. <laughs> what a damn shame. Y'all could at least give him a cameo. But even saying that, the word on the MK streets is he might morph into one of your favorite characters. The clue, look at his costume. But yeah, let's talk about Onaga's army. Didn't cover it in the trailer in my first look. Let's cover it now. Now, if you're kind of new to MK, you might be saying, who the hell is Onaga's army? What's so special about them? I'll break it down for you from the jump. It is now known that the sorcerer Quan Chi has escaped from the nether realm. Since his escape, Quan Chi has unlocked the secret of the ancient rune stone. Discovered the ancient undefeatable army of the long forgotten dragon king. And most disturbing of all, formed an alliance with one of our deadliest enemies, Shang Tsung. They have since returned to our world and are using the souls of conquered warriors to resurrect the Dragon King's undefeatable army. Should they succeed, they will have the means to conquer Outworld and eventually Earthrealm. They will be unstoppable. I can no longer stand idly by and watch this evil consume the world. I have relinquished my status as Elder God to return to Earth and lead you all to battle against our old adversaries. We must act now. We must stop this deadly, deadly alliance. alliance. So you see, one of the most important things in the Deadly Alliance game was Onaga's army because they were undefeated. Yes, Quan Chi and Shang Tsung were tough, but with the combined power of an undefeated army, they won. Yes, they're fodder, but five fodders equal a threat. Five Yamchas are gonna be a problem. Six Quillens are gonna be a threat. <laughs> yeah, and what's interesting here is it was Shang Tsung's ability that resurrected the mummified bodies. It was his transferring soul's ability that did it. The Deadly Alliance was successful in reviving the mummified remains of the Dragon King's undefeatable army. Shang Tsung, however, began to realize that his relevance in the partnership had evaporated once his talents for soul transplantation were no longer needed. The balance of power within the Deadly Alliance had seemingly been undone. Fearing betrayal, he secretly instructed Kano to steal Quan Chi's amulet in an attempt to gain control of the army. Since part of the soul transfer spell included the command to obey he who possesses the amulet, the army would obey only Shang Tsung and not Quan Chi once the amulet was in his possession. Amulet in hand, Shang Tsung revealed his betrayal to Quan Chi and commanded the army to destroy the sorcerer. Why would you ever Shang trust Tsung Shang Tsung? Shang Tsung would succeed where others had failed. 
He would conquer the realms. He would conquer Earth. Enough jobbers equal a threat. And let's not forget that depressing Lee May ending. Lee May had been promised that her people would be freed from enslavement if she could win the tournament held by the Deadly Alliance. Uh -huh. Now that she had emerged victorious, no, she didn't. the true purpose behind the tournament was finally revealed to her. And what was that? Her soul would be the last one Shang Tsung needed to completely revive the Dragon King's lost army. Damn. Her people would never be free, <laughs> and Lu Mei herself would remain trapped inside uh, the mummified remains of a dead soldier. That is brutal. To serve the deadly alliance forever. What a depressing ending. What a depressing game. This game was dark, people. Or you could just be Onog and just walk in and the army listens to you. But it is said that there is only one true ruler of Outworld. And that ruler had returned. Onaga, former emperor of Outworld, the Dragon King. The prophecy had been fulfilled. The Dragon King had indeed returned to Outworld to reclaim his army and impose his dominance. Death awaited all who stood in his way. was formed out of desperation. Sworn enemies joined forces to combat a greater threat. Raiden began to realize that even their combined might was not enough to defeat the Dragon King. only one chance left. Raiden's sacrifice was in vain. For the blast had little effect on the Dragon King. And unfortunately, it's looking like this story is just a build-up to Onaga. Meaning if Onaga doesn't make it into the expansion pack, he won't even make it into the freaking game. Meaning you're probably gonna have to wait four more years to see Onaga. That sucks. So you have to pray that he's in the expansion pack. And uh, this is the point I was making in previous videos. Some of these characters didn't need to be here. We've already seen their story. Okay, all they're doing now is postponing Onaga's appearance. I said it, Shang Tsung shouldn't have been here. And all this talk about Titan Shang Tsung as the last boss, that sucks. That should have been done and dusted in MK11. People, we can just hope they have a well-written story explaining all of this. And it needs to be good. Otherwise, you'll have Fire God Luke and looking incompetent and hella stupid. This man was in control, had years upon years to plan this, saw all timelines. His enemies should be new threats. Don't forget Shao Kahn, Shang Tsung, Quan Chi. These are all people he's dealt with. You're gonna have Luke Kang looking like freaking Chronica. Stupid as hell. But I hope not, and I hope the story is well written. But hey, we have to wait and see. We don't know yet. Who do you think is resurrecting Onaga's army in this trailer? Is it Shang Tsung? Hell, is it Quan Chi? Is it General Shao? Or is it now the new retconned Rain, who is now searching for dark magic and is now a high-level sorcerer, a high-level mage? 